The real estate market right now, well, let's just call a spade a spade. It is bananas. And the purpose of this and, and our goal in bringing this to you is to give you the information that you need to make the right decision for you. I am the, the sales manager and I, I run all of the hiring and training and recruiting. And so in going out on appointments with agents on the team and meeting homeowners and clients and buyers and sellers, I think the biggest discrepancy or obstacle right now in the market is clarity. It's information and having the information that we need to make the best decision, once again, for you. Homeowners in Massachusetts and New Hampshire, if you own a home, believe it or not, you've gained about 15% in equity from 2020 to now. What you might not know is how to leverage that, what that means for you and how to navigate achieving your goals as an individual or as a family without making it difficult. If you're one of those people, don't let it stress you out. I promise you, you don't have to. There's no reason to rush, there's no reason to jump, but it's information. So over the next couple of minutes, I'm gonna run some scenarios by you. These might pertain to you, they might not, but I encourage you to listen in because it might help someone else that you know. You bought your home, you know, three, five, eight, ten years ago, and you've done some improvements, but maybe your family is growing, or maybe you want to get to a different area of town or a different state or whatever reason it is. And you're wondering, well, my biggest fear is similar to the majority of people out there. Yeah, I could sell my house super quick and I can make a ton of money, but where am I going to go? And even more importantly, I'm going to overpay or I'm going to pay more for anything that I buy because, well, that's what the market's doing. It's the bananas effect is what we're going to call it. First things first, we've got to look at how much equity you have in your home and what is left on your mortgage. The reason for that is looking at your mortgage interest rate. If you've currently got a mortgage interest rate, whether it's a 15 year or 30 year or anything else of 4% or higher, I highly encourage you to reach out to a local lender or the bank that your mortgage is currently with. You can save a boatload of money on your monthly payment by lowering your interest rate. You can do a cash out refinance, which you can then use that equity that you cash out to improve whatever aspect of your home that you want, or you can use it for anything else, right? Trips, vacations, cars, who knows what you're gonna do with it? It's your money. Um, but the other thing is you can cut down the term of your loan. And so you can go from a 30 year mortgage to a 15 year mortgage and keep your monthly payment pretty much the same. Then you wanna look at what is the current value of your home? And any real estate professional can help you with that. So based on the appreciation, based on renovations and improvements, and based on the current demand in the market, which does shift, especially in New England. So you wanna link up with a real estate professional who you know, like, and trust, and heck, reach out to a few and have them do for you what's called a comparative market analysis. What this is gonna be is they're gonna bring a report of homes similar to yours in size regarding square footage, bedrooms, bathrooms, typically pending if it's suburban or urban, it'll be within a half mile radius. If it's more rural, they might go out a mile. If it's more urban, they'll probably keep it in a little bit closer, maybe a 10th of a mile or a quarter of a mile at the most. You're gonna review this with this real estate agent. And in talking through it, you're gonna look at the cosmetics of the home. You're gonna look at the location. And in that meeting, this the real estate agent that you meet with is gonna help you understand a couple of things. What your home could sell for, what the strategic pricing strategy would be, how you would price your home to get you the most money, but then it's that big, ugly goon in the corner saying, you're gonna have nowhere to go. So as someone in this position, right? You hold all of the cards. You decide what the marketing price is going to be. You decide when it, your home is going to go on the market and be available for showings and open houses and this, that, and the other. And throughout this whole time, you're going to have in your, in your sale of your home, a contingency. This contingency is going to be called a home sale contingency and a suitable housing contingency. So the suitable housing contingency is what's gonna protect you in the sale of your home. See, the beauty of real estate is that we can personalize the, the transaction, I hate that word, or the sale to you as the consumer. If your biggest fear is that you have nowhere to go or you won't find that perfect home, a home sale contingency allows you the following. 
to meet with an agent and select a marketing price, to meet with their, our staging consultant and prepare your home for sale, to go through the entire process of implementing the staging, conducting the professional photography, videography, and having us put together the, the media package, the marketing package with you. But it goes a step further. Having that suitable housing contingency, the way it's worded is, home sale is contingent on seller identifying, securing, and closing on suitable housing. This allows you to do all of the preparational work with your agent. It also allows you to actually put your home on the market, to have buyers come through at private showings and or open houses. It allows you to review offers. You can even accept an offer, but, at no point, my friends, will you ever be forced to sell your home. Now, could that initial buyer say, it's taking you too long to find something, I'm out? Sure, but that's where your agent comes in and our abilities and skills to negotiate. You will never be forced to leave until you identify, secure on, which means have under contract a home that you love and have closed on it. And then your real estate professional is gonna do some magic behind the, behind the mirror to make sure that closing dates line up and that you're never homeless, right? On the other side of this, right? You can start writing offers on other homes without your home being on the market. There is one facade or caveat to that, however. In a market like this one, where there are a ton of buyers and very few sellers, when a seller is reviewing offers that they've received, we're gonna look for a couple of things, right? I always tell clients who are buying homes, you can either win the, the offer stage on price or terms, right? A home sale contingency is what you'll put in offers when you go to buy a home. So any home that you write an offer on, it will be contingent on the sale of XYZ, right? Address, which is your address of the home that you're selling. And the seller of the home you're writing the offer on, they can review your offer, they can accept your offer. But the beauty again, is you still have control. At no point can you be forced to go and buy that other home until yours has sold. Unless you make the decision to, to move forward otherwise, right, through other means. But you've got all the control. Now, one thing, like I said, there's a caveat, a facade to this, is when you're submitting offers, it is in your best interest if you have a home sale contingency to at least already have your home prepped and the marketing done so that your agent can click a button, it goes out to the interweb, the whole world, everyone sees it. You know, you've got the all the third-party websites, the Zillow, Realtor, Trulia, Redfin, it all goes through an IDX, an information data exchange feed. So your home will be everywhere. And like other agents, we tie directly into that. Having your home on the market when you go to submit those offers strengthens your offer immediately, believe it or not. What's even better is having your home on the market and having your home under agreement. What this does for you is it allows you to give clarity to the seller of the home that you're buying as to when your home is closing, when you'll be able to close on theirs, as discussed earlier, right? Information, knowledge is power. If you have any thoughts of selling or testing the market or just knowing what your home is worth, you hold the control, you hold the power. And so quick recap. Check out what your current interest rate is and what the term is left on your loan. Not necessarily for selling, but to potentially save you some money and cut down the time that you're paying that mortgage. Secondarily to that, figure out what your home could sell for in the current market, right? And maybe, look, you might see a number that, that knocks your socks off, blows your mind, rocks your world, makes some waves, and maybe it gets you thinking and actually shows you that that next house is more achievable than you ever thought. Maybe it doesn't. You got nothing to lose, everything to gain. And then the third thing is know that this process is on your timeline, that at no point will you have to or be asked to do anything that isn't your choice on your terms and in your manner. And we're just here to facilitate that. So if you guys have any questions, if there are specific videos with content that you would like to see, drop a comment below, give me a like, anything, right? But once again, we're gonna be bringing these out to you guys to make sure that you are informed that you have the knowledge to make those decisive, powerful decisions that are best for you. Have a great day, guys.